So the iPhone 12 has just come out. It's worth a fair bit of money. Is it worth upgrading for someone like me with the iPhone 11 Pro, upgrading to a 12? I don't think it is, but I have got a new phone. It's a new phone that's recommended by what you guys have told me. Shane, you need to try this sort of phone at night time. So what is it? Well, I can tell you what, it absolutely eats the stars up when we take photos at night. So hang around and I'll show you what it is. Hey, g'day guys, Shane Molston here. Welcome to the channel. If you are new here, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon. I do two videos each and every week, all about small sense of photography. I teach you tips and tricks, all about light painting, editing, how to photograph the stars, all on this channel right here. So if you're into that sort of thing, hit the bell and come along for the ride. What we're talking about today is the new phone. iPhone 12 just come out, did I get it? No, I didn't. I can't justify it, but we'll talk about that in a minute. I did get, however, a phone that you guys have recommended, and I'm glad you did because it's pretty bloody good. Well, like in every video, I've got to tell you where I am today. So where are we? This is the Murray River, just here. On the other side of that is New South Wales. That's how our states are separated in this part of the world, with that river right there. Out here, it's had a little bit of rain. There's a lot of wind around at the moment. That rain makes a bit of mud out on these tracks here and makes my car all dirty. But anyway, I like being out here. It's, it's a pretty good place to live where we do. Nice and close to the bush, and I can bring you these sorts of videos from out here in these pretty cool locations. All right, let's talk about this phone. So when I first started this channel, the very first video that I ever did was about how to take photos of the stars with the iPhone 11 Pro. Now, someone who's always taking photos of the stars with a larger sensor camera, a full frame camera, and really fast lenses, I was blown away. I was really surprised that a little camera, a little phone, could take those sort of photos. And all this year, for the last 60 odd videos, minus the GoPro things, have all been with the iPhone 11 Pro. I've been blown away, it's been a really good camera. But when it came to the iPhone 12, the price of these things, and this is what we're paying for them here in Australia, it's mind blowing. It's so expensive for someone like me who's got an iPhone 11 Pro upgrading to a 12. It is my opinion though, that I don't, I don't think that Apple sees other uh, manufacturers as competition. I think that the main competition for the iPhone 12 is Apple's previous iPhones. That's what I think. Because you can buy some pretty cheap iPhones now these days that are second hand, and they've got really good cameras on them. So when it came to looking at that, I started looking at well, and I always pay, a, pay attention to what you guys are saying in the comments there about Shane, try this, Shane, try this, Shane, try this. And generally speaking, I do most of what you say, uh, suggest as far as apps and things like that go. A lot of you guys have been asking about that Pixel 4 and saying you need to shoot this sort of star photos with the Pixel 4. So I went and got one. For the, in Australia here, these are 600 bucks. In the US, they're 350 odd dollars. They're so cheap. It's a budget phone, but with a camera on it, it's basically the same camera that's on the Pixel 5, and boy, can it take some bloody good photos. This is the Google Pixel 4a. This is a budget phone with a camera that I'm telling you now, it's pretty bloody good. 3,100 milliamp battery life. So that'll last me, someone like me, the whole day. Six gig of RAM, 128 gig of storage. To be honest, that's more than enough for someone like me as well. The camera is a 12.2 megapixel camera, and on the front, front facing camera it's an 8 megapixel camera the video is okay it's not great but that's not what we do here uh, polycarbonate unibody I've got this Google cover on it at the moment it's kind of a material sort of a cover yeah, I, I find it to be pretty good it's got gorilla glass on the front so it's going to be reasonably sturdy when you're using this day-to-day -day use I've also got here the iPhone 11 Pro and put them together this one here's got a, a uh, quad lock case on it so that i can use it on the motorbike it mounts to the handlebars but you can see there that they're they're roughly the same sort of size the weight between the two the pixel is a little bit lighter than the iphone this thing's a, a stainless steel body i think it is from memory so it's going to be pretty pretty uh, heavy um, in saying that I've dropped this a couple of times, it's already got a couple of cracks in it. I've dropped this a couple of times and so far, nothing. So, so far, as far as durability goes, it's pretty good. Now that's 2020, well, unlocking your phone, facial recognition doesn't really work that well anymore. Fingerprint recognition though, works perfectly well. It works just so well 
with this phone. Tap on the back, it's alive. And it's simple as just that. Now a lot of you guys know that I teach photography with proper cameras to all sorts of different people. And there's a regular group that I run every two weeks here in my hometown. And there's only been one occasion that I can think of where I've actually told someone the gear is holding you back with your photography. This lady was shooting on an old Ricoh point and shoot uh, camera. Yeah, Ricoh, can you believe it? But she's a very good photographer and the gear was really holding her back when it came to things like, especially with astrophotography, when you're trying to shoot stars in the Milky Way with a little old point and shoot camera that had no manual controls. And I told her, you need to upgrade your phone. You need something that's got some manual controls on it. So when it comes to phones, I belong to a number of groups on uh, Pinterest and on Facebook and that sort of thing and I look at a lot of photos on Instagram of people who are taking photos with this high-end camera gear and they're no good. So it doesn't really matter I'm going to say what camera you have, you need to be a good photographer, you need to understand the rules of composition, you need to understand exposure and all those sorts of things to be a good photographer. The gear is way down the list, any good photographer worth their salt will make good old gear work better, in some cases, than new gear. It's just the way it is. So this video isn't about bashing the iPhone 12, because I just know that the Apple fanboys, like myself, are gonna get down in the comments there and just go to town. The iPhone 12 is a bloody good camera, but is it worth upgrading from an iPhone 11 to the iPhone 12? And in my opinion, it's just not worth it. The money is just not there. These things are horrendously expensive when you're upgrading for something that's just so, so, so close to what it actually is. So when it comes to the Pixel, the Pixel 4a, this is a budget phone. This thing in the States is worth 350 bucks. In Australia, it's worth 600 bucks. And I've got to tell you, going from the iOS environment into the Android environment, it wasn't that big a deal. Hook up the cable, transfer all the apps that work on both, transfer the contacts, transfer your photos, and it worked really well. Before we go into them though, let me just explain what I did last night. I took both phones out with a tripod, tri the phone holder as well. I set the tripod up, put the phone holder on top, put a phone in, took a photo, put the second phone in, took a photo, and we'll go through the comparison of those photos in low light in just a minute. When we use the Pixel 4a, or we'll use any Pixel for that matter, the astrophotography mode on this thing, it is dead set simple to use. If you wanna know more about how to use it, make sure you subscribe to this channel. Next week, once the moon phase changes, we'll certainly do some more astrophotography with that. But we got some stars last night, and uh, anyway, let's have a look and see if you can pick which phone took which photo. I'll run through them all, and then I'll show you which ones took which. So first of all, we went into town, and I took this photo of the main street in town. It's, um, it's a pretty good little street, pretty good little town where we live. I think it's the only one in Australia where the main street is on one side of the town and on the other side it's just parkland and there's a creek and it just goes straight into the bush. It's, uh, it's quite unique. But let's have a look at this photo and you can see up through there there's a lot of lens flare. You can see the water tower at the back there. A lot of lens flare. And let's have a look at this other photo here. And it's got pretty well the same thing it actually doesn't look all that different in this photo. They look pretty similar. Next one is a cow. We're in dairy country here, so this, this cow is kind of, I won't say it's the mascot, but it's out the front of the information center and uh, people tend to get their photo taken with this cow. But anyway, middle of the night, well, it was about two in the morning or so, and uh, I took a photo of this cow. So let's have a look at this one. There's also a little bit of lens flare there. And both of these phones at the moment, you can see there's a bit more saturation and sharpness in one of those photos. All right, let's go to the next photo. The next photo is of the tower. Now this was some distance away and I zoomed in digitally to both of these, to, with both of these photos. And one did the photo, well, didn't do it that well. The other one did it well, a damn sight better. We're probably 200 meters away from this tower and it took the photo, I think, pretty well on one of them. So the next one is the moon. Um, with astrophotography, you really want to avoid the moon at all costs, really, because it creates too much light pollution. 
But uh, hang around, like I said, and in a couple of weeks when that moon phase has changed, I'll get out there and take some photos of that galactic core and show you what this phone can do. Anyway, we're up to the moon photos. Look at this one here. And I've done videos on the iPhone with that little bloody annoying green flare that it does um, when you're looking into something bright like the moon. And guess what? Both cameras did this. One did it better than the other. One of them actually looks, well, they both kind of look like the moon itself in that reflection, um, in, the, in the lens flare, I should say. But both of those photos don't look too bad. Uh, I'm going to say they're both nice and sharp on the horizon where those trees and stuff are. Anyway, let's go to the next one. The next photo is a proper astrophotography photo. There's a light pole there. Well, it's not a little light pole, but it's a power pole there. And there's plenty of stars in the sky. Look nice and close, and what we're looking for here is digital noise and things like that. And artifacts. Artifacts on iPhones and artifacts on any smartphone that I've seen so far has been pretty bloody horrible. So, that's that one. We'll go to the next one. The next one is a proper astrophotography photo as well. We'll zoom into the stars on both and have a look. One of them is just a damn sight better than the other one. All right, so did you pick which photo was from which phone? Well, these are all from the Pixel phones. Let's have a look. You look at the stars on this. When I look at the stars on the very first astro photo that I took on the Pixel, I was blown away. In saying that, I was the same when I looked at the iPhone for the very first time as well. But this thing, this thing just chews up the stars. What is the difference in the two photos. Let's zoom right in and have a look at the artifacts that you get on the iPhone 11 Pro and you get it on the 12, I've seen the photos, and have a look at what you get on the Pixel. The Pixel is by far so much better than what it does on the iPhone 11 Pro. But why is that the case? Well, when we take the photos with both phones, the process is the same, the time is a lot longer on the Pixel. Let me explain. When you set the iPhone up for a nighttime photo, you go into night mode, you enable it with that little yellow button there. If it's on a tripod, it'll let you shoot for a 30 second photo. 30 seconds is a long time for astrophotography. Most lenses are going to give you some form of star trails on your photos. But these days with computational photography, as in there is enough of the algorithm working hard enough to line up the stars in the phone for the pixel, it shoots for like four minutes four freaking minutes. That's a long time. I thought I was doing something wrong, to be honest, when I first shot it, but the photo that I got out of there, there's not one little star trail. The algorithms in that phone that stacks up those photos that it's taking in that four minutes, it's pretty bloody impressive. I can't fault it. Now these photos, they're not edited. These are just straight out of the phone, straight out of the camera, showing you right now. There's no editing on these at all. What I'll do though, I'll grab the best one from the Pixel and I'll give it a quick edit in Lightroom and I'll show you what it can do. So how's that? That's pretty bloody amazing out of a freaking phone a four minute long exposure on a tripod and this is the result you get. This is amazing, I think this is amazing. Like I said, I'm gonna give it a couple of weeks, wait for that moon phase to change, and we'll see what we can capture with the Milky Way, the galactic core if you like, that gaseous cloud. We'll see how it can perform with the Pixel 4a. Well guys, don't forget, head over to phonephotoschool.com.au. Go down the bottom of that page and subscribe to that website. What you'll get for that is an ebook with six tips to make more creative phone photos. What you'll also get are three free presets for Snapseed. Yeah, you can do presets for Snapseed, and when you get over there, I'll give them to you for free. All right, guys, let's get out of here. I'll see you next week.